Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked Fly Fly Fishing, and today we're going to tie the alley shrimp. Now, this is a pattern that was uh, made famous by a tire by the name of uh, Ali Gowans, Alistair Gowans, I should say, uh, who uh, fished the, the D and the Tay and the, oh, what was the other one? Tweed. Uh, with this particular pattern. Now, it's primarily meant for Atlantic salmon. However, uh, there's no reason why a shrimp, orange shrimp pattern, doesn't work for steelhead out in the west coast as well. I don't think it would be a, a particularly great steelhead pattern for the Great Lakes, but you never know. Uh, I have taken f uh, fish on orange flies before in the Great Lakes, so probably will work. But west coast for sure, as well as Atlantic salmon. Uh, it's a bit more of an involved pattern, uh, so some of the other ones I've done have been easier. This one is a little trickier. I'm going to start off first by talking about what I've done with this tube. Now, you can see I've got heat shrink here. That's a uh, 3 16 heat shrink that I've shrunk down to fit on a 3 30 seconds aluminum tube that it's one and a half inches long. So this is not a particularly big tube. And the reason why I've put that heat shrink on is when you tie a, f a tail on a tube fly, if you tie the tail on the tube and then push in your junction tubing, your tail kicks up. And yeah, you know, it doesn't. It could actually cause the fly to spin, act like a propeller. So uh, if we put heat shrink uh, as junction tubing all the way along the tube, and you could use colored heat shrink too. You don't have to use clear, um, and just leave a uh, spot at the front for tying in uh, other materials, wings and what have you, hackles. Then you can uh, actually end up with a wing that will lay completely flat. Uh, on the tube fly with the junction tube in place. So that's a purpose for this. I've added the mandrel here just to give it a little bit of extra stiffness because it's a little spongy when you put the uh, heat shrink covered tube in uh, in the uh, vise. I'll tighten it down a little bit more. Don't want to squish it too much. So let's look at the materials. The thread is going to be this orange uh, Vivas. I'm using 10 knot because that's all I have in bright orange. I would use six if you uh, have it. Our tail is going to be orange bucktail. Unfortunately, this is a very bad uh, bucktail. It's not going to produce a nice wing. I have to kind of get some new orange. That's pretty bad. Uh, our rib is going to be uh, uni French in this uh, gold medium oval. The back end of the body is going to be uni floss in orange. The front end of the body is going to be uni floss in black. Our wing is going to be gray squirrel. We're going to use orange saddle hackle for the hackling. And we're going to be using a uh, golden pheasant tip for uh, a topping. So let's get going. I'll start my thread in front of the heat shrink. And I'll bring it up onto the heat shrink. Stop there. Now I'm going to stack my uh, orange bucktail. This stuff doesn't stack well, it's kind of crinkly. When you're buying bucktail and you see a very crinkly uh, tail, and if you plan on stacking, I would uh, not use the crinkly stuff. Uh, this is okay if you are tying it without uh, stacking. The, the crinkly stuff doesn't work too badly. So now we're going to put this back to about here, well maybe a little further, about to about there on the vise. Uh, and the reason for this tail, the tail is about the uh, double the length of the, the tube. And I'll cut it off right about where the heat shrink ends. Make sure that stays on top. A couple of firm wraps to keep it in place. Now we're going to tie in our rib. Now we'll work all this back, keep it all on top of the tube.
Now I'm going to leave it a little short of the jaw of the vise because if I take it right back, it will kick that tail up and put a kink in it and may not lay flat after I'm done. So this way I'm not stressing that tail too much and it should stay in place. Next we're going to tie in our orange floss. Just advance your thread, get it out of the way. Now, you're tying floss over bucktail, over heat shrink. So there's no point being super fussy about it. You're not going to get a, a neat coverage. So I'm going to, uh, you know, make sure it covers adequately, but I'm not going to be fussing over a beautifully smooth body. I just want to make sure there's no gaps, that's all. So I will sort of stack this up pretty close together, but it's going to be uh, not a, a, the most elegantly smooth body. Now we'll tie in the black. Now we'll repeat this and just make sure your floss doesn't leave any gaps between the orange and the black. Now before tying on the rib, I'm just going to build up that junction a little bit so the material flows smoothly into that junction doesn't skid. You can see that we've already got a little bit of movement in the floss. So this way um, when I wind material on it doesn't uh, have a big notch to deal with at the end of the heat shrink. Okay, now for our rib, we'll put a turn at the back, and then we'll start to come forward. Now, you see why I'm putting that uh, little build up a thread? I've avoided my uh, rib from skidding off the end of it. Okay, now for our squirrel. We're not going to be putting a particularly uh, thick wing. This is fairly sparse. There's a lot of material going on here, so you don't want to be uh, putting too much on here. So we're going to put it towards the uh, end of the body of the, the tube. Okay, what we're going to do is just going to pinch loop this. And bring the thread back. Pull out any strays. Okay, when you're putting on the pheasant tip, there will be a tendency for it to roll. So one of the first things I've done is I've trimmed off. I haven't got a long stem on that. Because what I find is one of the problems with a long stem is as you start to wind over that long stem, it will spin off and twist and gets ugly. So I've kept it short. And I've flattened the wing out with my thumb. So I can just put this on top 
hold it in place and put some soft wraps and it moved so we put this in place put a soft wrap really soft wrap there we go okay now for our orange hackle we're not going to put tons on I'm going to trim it about here I don't want this too overdressed And we're just going to fold the hackle back and come forward. Try not to trap any. If you see yourself trapping hackle, take a moment, pull it out. There we go. I take the mandrel out when I whip finish it'll make it be, be easier. The mandrel can get in the way when you try to uh, whip finish. We don't really need it at this stage anyway. Okay now for some UV glue. And some top coat. There we go, Alley Shrimp. A little bit more complicated pattern than some of the others I've tied. Uh, as I say, when I pull that out of the vise, the tail will lay down flat because of the way we've handled it. heat shrink. It also made the um, floss body reasonably smooth. And the important thing is where you've got that ledge created by the end of the heat shrink, fill it up with thread so your materials slope off and they don't, you know, drop off, which will create problems. And as you can see, my, uh, my uh, golden pheasant tips did move around a little bit finally, but it's a fishing fly. If I was tying competition, it wouldn't look like this, but this is just to catch fish. So and in the end, I'm not going to worry about it too much. So there you go, uh, Alley Shrimp. As I say, great salmon fly, and it'll work fine, I think, for West Coast fish as well. Cheers.